my life was, I mean, the life of the uh, normal other people. I was uh, studying, I was working partially with local NGOs. Mm -hmm. I was also a teacher. I was even dreaming to study further, but you know, it was actually my life. I was even living with my, my with my mom, although my father was died, and my even I mean my brother was also killed by you know Al Shabaab. I mean they they tell him to join and then he refused it and then they executed him. So uh, so my my life is is that in Somalia I actually I taught uh, I English. Mm -hmm. I also, uh, I mean, there was also a time that I was lecturing one of my, one of the universities that's located in my country, uh, particularly in uh, in Bardere city. So these are the two things I was teaching. I was born in uh, Bardere of Gedo region of Somalia. It is one of the, I mean, biggest regions in Somalia. Gede is one of, I mean, Gedo is one of the biggest regions of, of Somalia. Uh, it has a lot of farming system. It has rivers. Uh, it has uh, livestock. I mean, so it's one of the biggest and one of the most, I mean, productive regions of Somalia. And where I live it, that region was a subset. Subset, I mean, it was a, there was a city called it Bardere. That, that was where I was living. Uh, actually, uh, in Somalia, uh, the whole system was clubs, so it's hard to find job. I mean, the country close to, I don't know, 99% people are unemployed. There are very few, I mean, international organizations who are doing, I mean, UN missions in Somalia and providing assistance to the needy people. This is the only source of, I mean, work. Old people, they they don't work mostly, but what w mostly those who go to work uh, are the women because, you know, they start small business in Somalia, like a small restaurant where they cook tea and small, small, I mean, meals, and then they sell and then they feed to their family. And this is what my, my actually my, my mother w did because my father was died. I was so, and before his death, he was unemployed. But my mom did something, and when I grew up, I started working, and I, I was supporting them as well. I was almost one year old when the, I mean, the regime was uh, removed from so Somalia. What I heard from my grandfathers and my parents, as well as what I read, what I have seen is that Siad Bure was a, 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 a military man who was a, uh, who has a kind of, I mean, a leadership like leadership like. Uh, uh, dictatorship leadership who was killing his people and executing. There were lack of trust between the government of Somalia and the people of Somalia as well. And, uh, and there was a lot of oppression. And at the same time, there were a lot of good things happening on the other side. Like, for example, education system was an excellent. Uh, Somalia was one of the most powerful, I mean, in, in Africa at that time. And uh, and it was actually, I mean, having relationship with the U.S. and the, you know, and the EU. So, I mean, there was a lot of economic progress. Uh, what I read is that also, you know, in 80s, they were planning to be self-sufficient without getting anything from abroad. So at, if you look at that side, they were doing right things. But if you look at the other side of the picture, you see that people are killing meaningless. People are executed. People who were actually oppressed much more than any other body in Somalia are the people who are living the north. And there are, you know, many reports that are even available everywhere in, in the United Nations or even wh wherever you uh, try to search that information, you can get it. So, I mean, it was like, uh, I mean, a horrible situation. It was, uh, I mean, Red, uh, red period, I mean, where people are slaughtered, killing meaningless, I mean, uh, spying, I mean, you know, so it was horrible. But if you look at the other side, and then there was some also, I mean, economic progress, education, and all this. Uh, UN, actually, I was young at that, this, th that time as well. Uh, but what I heard is that when the Siad Barre regime was, was removed, the whole country became chaos. There was war warlords. There were different, I mean, uh, groups. 
and then they started killing again people even worse than the time of the Siad Barrek because that time there was some at least kind of system that is that was in place and and when they I mean the situation was bad they start killing the normal civilian people and then the United Nations they I don't know they decided maybe to send uh, troops particularly from the US and then they went there they they tried to I mean diffuse the tension and the situation they actually did a good job uh, at the beginning as I I read uh, they did something good and then after some time you know due to the lack of knowledge of the country I mean uh, the, the warlords were somehow was successful for for I mean was successful in fighting with the international uh, fi uh, fighters from US so it's it looks like something that was tried but was not worked so but it was good to go there and save you know the lives of Somali people I, I, I believe that was a good thing for the US to go to Somalia and save the lives of the civilians I mean in Somalia the problem is are, are huge because I mean if you look at Somalia deeply you can see that Somalia is like a no, no man's land currently I mean there are different people with different political agendas there are terror groups there are you know I mean uh, their own problem is like guys who are called Al-Shabaab the terrorist group that are linked with Al-Qaeda you know uh, there are many I mean problems they are facing so when, when you don't have a moral government I mean uh, democratically elected that can handle the country properly then sure the chaos can be like Somalia or maybe uh, you know the same so I believe that Somalia is currently ex is, is experiencing spirals is, is number is one which is also affecting the other parts of the world because you know we have the longest short sea in uh, in 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 Africa. Uh, you can imagine without controlling, with without I mean I mean, uh, troops that are I mean safeguarding the international, I mean trading system and all this. So piracy is there, fishing illegal fishing is there because there are people who are uh, there are other governments who are coming to our international our sea and then they are fishing without making any consultation with you know. A Somali government who is not actually who is very weak we have also famine and you know because I mean our people are depending on the the rain the the, the rainy seasons mm. the, that's that's where they get the water and all this they don't have a reserve water they don't have a proper mechanism to prepare themselves for the droughts and all this so due to that you know famine is always there I mean, all African countries are, are victims of climate change and some maybe, I mean, uh, countries are doing good things like Ethiopia, like making green all their countries. And But in, in my country, yes, of course, uh, climate change uh, in Somalia, they affected us deeply uh, because we don't get the rain as usual. Uh, we see that, I mean, uh, and that affected us, our, our, our agricultural system, our livestock system, the life of the, I mean, the rural areas, the life of the, I mean, the urban areas, combination of all this, they really, really, I mean, affected that. And we believe that climate change is something that's harming in our country as well. Actually, I decided to leave my country when I realized that I was threatened. I was threatened that I would be killed. I do to what I was doing because I was partially working with civil society organizations and I was teaching universities. The bad guys from Al Shabaab they were not happy what I was doing there. I even they killed my, my, my brother and then that's uh, w when I decided to leave the country because they told me they told me to stop working with, with with civil society organizations. They told me to stop teaching because they believe that English is a language of other people and uh, they also you know made me to escape from where I was uh, living. One day my country become stable. What I would love to uh, to do is to go back and uh, I mean transfer what I learned from I mean Deutschland and uh, and if I get the chance to be educated I would also like to get education like maybe good governance and leadership which is I mean one of the burning issues in my country because we don't have now a leadership that can take the leadership of the country in a good direction and uh, even I would like to learn like security because security is one of the biggest problem in my country today so if I got these things and if my country became stable 
then properly I will go and try to do something and help them, you know, to to recover my country. But I mean, I will not forget as well, you know, what I was educated here. I have to also be a contributing member of the society. I have to be, you know, uh, I, I will do what I can do also for in Germany as well.